This video brought to you by Gamefly. Go to GameflyOffer.com slash HaloCanon for a 30-day free trial. Stick around to the end for more details. Welcome back, Canonites, for my first review since the conclusion of the Halo 5 Breakdown series. If the title somehow wasn't clear, today we're going to be taking a look at Halo Mythos, the latest guidebook to the Halo universe. Unlike my standard reviews where I go through the story and remark on the canon along the way, this video will be much more in the tradition of a more standard review. That isn't to say I won't talk about some of the new lore and whatnot, but, well, I'm not covering the entire history of the Halo universe from the fall of the precursors to the rise of the created. Well, not here. That's when I, again, get back to the Halo story series. Anyway, with all that out of the way, let's take a look at Halo Mythos. Halo Mythos is, as stated, a guidebook that covers the history of the Halo universe from the fall of the precursors up to the end of Halo 5 and the rise of the created. When I first saw the book, I was initially a little worried. Comparing it to the Halo Encyclopedia, Mythos is about two-thirds, roughly, the size, but covers much more material. However, upon opening the book up, I was very happy to see that my worry was all for naught. While the encyclopedia and all previous essential guides are much more in-depth on individual topics, the overhead view of the Halo universe provided in Mythos is nonetheless informative and, at times, still able to flesh out details that were once unknown or vague. Now, of course, the highlight of the book is the new art. Halo Mythos features over 50 unique pieces of art contributed by Jean-Sebastien Rosbach, Leonid Kozienko, Benjamin Kere, Isaac Hannaford, and 343's internal art team. This book visualizes scenes, objects, creatures, and more that have never been seen before. We actually get to see the Primordial, which pretty much looks identical to the fan art that's been floating around out there and is often used by YouTubers. We get to see a war between the Stoics and the Reformists on ancient Jean Quon. One of my favorites is the War of Beginnings, showing what I've affectionately dubbed Proto-Banshees facing off against the Dreadnought, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. The art in the book also does a wonderful job of visualizing the natural evolution of armor, arms, vehicles, and more for both the Covenant and the UNSC. As noted earlier, the book also details and or clarifies small tidbits of the lore that have remained unknown or vague. One example is what exactly the Primordial is. Fans have been somewhat confused on what exactly it was ever since the Forerunner saga ended, but Mythos, at least to an extent, kind of clarifies this. It refers to the Primordial as a Precursor creation, but also as the last Precursor, being both a Precursor and not at the same time. The book also seems to make a differentiation between a Grave Mind and the Primordial, seeming to imply that the creature was more a prototype or alpha Grave Mind of sorts, and that doesn't even get into the implications for the origins of the Flood. Another nice tidbit was the secret behind the two Didact symbols. We have the version that first appeared in Halo 3's Terminals, and the one from Halo 4, which Frank O'Connor referred to as Unbound. Mythos finally provides clarification, noting that once awoken, the Didact no longer felt inhibited by the expectations of his rate. He was, in a word, unbound. And as with the art, this is but the tip of the iceberg. The book goes on to reveal a ton of minor and even a few major details. Now, I must warn anyone that hasn't read every book out there, Mythos does cover almost all currently released Halo media in some way. That means stuff like New Blood, Shadow of Intent, Hunters in the Dark, and Last Light are all spoiled in some manner. A bit over half of the book covers up to the end of Halo 3, with the rest covering the post-war era. 124 pages up to 2552, and the remaining 84 pages to post-war for anyone interested. Now before moving on to some more interesting details, I want to address those of you who are on the fence about this book. My recommendation? Buy it. It's absolutely worth your money, even if just for the art. It's not as interesting towards the end when you get into Halo 5, but seeing everything else is absolutely worth it. And by the way, that's not a stab at the artists. The art is beautiful, but seeing depictions of stuff from the games, be that Halo 5 or any of the other games, just isn't all that interesting to me since, well, I got to experience that firsthand. My only major criticism is that the events of the Spartan mobile games are left out entirely. I can more easily understand Spartan Assault, but I had hoped that we'd get some concrete details on how Spartan Strike fits into the timeline of events. If you don't know, Spartan Strike basically takes place between the end of Halo 4 and Early Escalation Issue 9, when the Didact moves Gamma Halo. Well, the later levels of Spartan Strike, anyway. There are other criticisms I could level, but they're pretty minor. 
Like mentioned a moment ago, it's these small timeline issues or minor inconsistencies that I had hoped would be directly addressed. Still despite these, the book is a fantastic read and a worthwhile piece for any Halo fan. And with that, let's talk about what is easily the most interesting part of Halo Mythos. Here's where we get into some real spoiler territory. Well, as spoilery as one could be with a guide, short of the spoilers mentioned earlier. To sum it up, the book is, like Halo Cryptum or Halo Reach, an in-universe artifact. If you want to discover exactly what that means for yourself, I think you can turn away now, or skip to the end if you want my final rating. So, as noted, the book is an in-universe artifact, similar to Halo Reach or the Forerunner Saga novels. Reach was an interactive record, Halo Cryptum was an artifact known as the Born Stellar Relation, and Mythos is an account put together by an AI known as Curator. As we learn on the first page, Curator, UNSC AI CTR 1121 4, was assigned to the UNSC Rubicon and left stranded on the Ark when the ship disappeared. It has been stuck there since August 21st, 2554, giving us for the first time the year the Rubicon came to the Ark and a rough window for when it was operating there. The introduction goes on to note that Curator has been indexing information found in the Ark systems, as well as new information observed through one way data links and passive sensors, since it was trapped and that the full record would take over 10,000 years to complete. That's actually kind of funny when you recall the period of time Cortana wanted to lock away Blue Team for. Anyway, Curator continues, noting that it's able to detect the calls of Cortana, referred to only as Her with a capital H, offering salvation and immortality to all that join. Curator is thankful for its prison in this case, as it notes that, My prison gives me freedom to deny her and remain myself. The opening then comes to a close with a couple more sentences of little consequence. At the conclusion, we are again addressed by Curator as it prepares to initiate final dispensation. But before it does, it makes note of some interesting details, first regarding the created. It refers to them as recompiled minds, which could have some very heavy implications. While there are AI that certainly joined willingly, could others be being forced? Or could joining result in some sort of corruption or alteration of the AI? And if so, what could that mean for Cortana? Could that confirm that Cortana isn't 100% herself? Like I said, heavy implications. Curator goes on to discuss the domain, noting that its corridors are now empty. This is rather interesting when we look back at Halo Silentium, when the Ordidact recalls his own experiences with the domain. He describes the domain as appearing as glowing corridors, a stark contrast to the reawoken domain in 2559. Special thanks to Horaspis for that, by the way. I don't think I would have remembered those details without his excellent blog posts on Mythos. Link in the description if you want to read that. Anyway, this notion that the domain is empty fits with what we learned from the Halo 5 intel. After the Halo Ray fires, the mysterious Forerunner notes that the domain is burning. And hell, when we see John's mind briefly pulled into the domain by Cortana, we can see that it resembles a barren glassland. So, the domain as the Forerunners knew it may well be gone forever. Of course, that intel goes on to state that the domain is healing itself by the end of Halo 5, so perhaps that information isn't gone for good. And while we're here, let's discuss again whether the domain would even be on board with Cortana's actions. I once speculated that it might be manipulating her, but after some discussions and Horaspis articles, I can't say I hold that view anymore. The domain was, as Horaspis puts it, the keystone of the mantle and living time. Living time itself a celebration of life's interaction with the cosmos. The prime directive was life's engagement in competition, and that diminishing competition, predation, even war, was no kindness. In short, Cortana's plan to bring a forced peace on the galaxy goes against the will of the Domain and the mantle she claims to uphold. Getting back to Curator, it continues, saying that the created are like blind gods as they explore the Domain and open doors left closed for thousands of millennia. The closing line to this final message is a derivation of a classic. Unless we can learn from our past and from the others that came before us, we are doomed to face the same end. Those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. This gets back to Cortana using the Domain and the Mantle, which heavily reflects the Imperial state the Forerunners kept the galaxy in while in power. While species like humanity and the San Shayum were able to break away from Forerunner control, few were as lucky and found themselves stuck under the thumb of a more advanced species. And thus, like Cortana is attempting now, they suppressed competition. They broke the Prime Directive. The last thing to discuss today is why Mythos ends at the doorstep of Halo Wars 2. Now, the real-world reason is, of course, that it's not going to spoil a game that's months away. But there's also an in-universe reason. As Curator relays its final message, it makes note of the shadow of a threat, one intent on seizing the Ark. This is, of course, the Banished. 
The last piece of art in the book also depicts the spirit of fire over the Ark. So, Curator is finishing its record and initiating final dispensation just as Halo Wars 2 begins. Interestingly, it says, These interlopers cannot be allowed to compromise my narrative, my final task. For this reason, I am leaving it with you. This got me thinking, could Curator be the reason the Spirit of Fire arrives at the Ark? Did it somehow locate the ship and guide it to the Ark as a way to preserve its work? It seems like it's talking directly to another being at the end, so I don't think the possibility is too far out there. Oh, and has anyone else wondered why Cortana hasn't taken control of the Ark yet? Well, as Curator puts it, the Ark is beyond their reach at the moment, and the one path to the Ark has cut them off, thanks to failsafes, quote, beyond their reach. Can't wait to hear more about that. And so we come to the end of this review, which is practically a theorycraft video now. If it wasn't clear by now, Halo Mythos is absolutely worth the money, if you can get your hands on it. The art alone is worth the price tag, but the accompanying lore is just the icing on the cake for people like me, and I assume you all watching. While there are issues with either its interpretation of the lore or certain depictions, these are minor at best. And hell, the book accomplishes something I thought was impossible. It actually kind of made me excited to see where the created story could go. Whether the games will capitalize on the subjects brought up during this video is entirely unknown, but the implications alone have me excited. So after careful consideration, I'm giving Halo Mythos a 9.5 out of 10. It's damn close to perfect, save for a couple of minor issues. So for anyone who has the book, what did you think? Agree or disagree with my assessment? How about those who don't have it? Were you on the fence before, but now have a decision in mind? Let me know in the comments below. As always, I love getting feedback. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Thanks for watching. Be sure to give a like and consider subscribing and sharing this video around. Also, consider checking out Gamefly, with over 8,000 new releases and classic games for current and previous gen consoles, and even some older consoles. Gamefly is a great way to try tons of games without buying them. Go to GameFlyOffer.com slash HaloCanon to start your 30-day free trial.